Thank you everyone for subscribing to Infinitely Productions. If it is you have not done so, please click the bell and subscribe and we hope you enjoy our content. Police say Baldino had just walked out of the Melrose Diner and opened the door to his white Cadillac when two or three men in ski masks ran up and fired. He was hit five or six times. I counted 11 bullet holes in Baldino's car and the car parked next to it, which is owned by this man. I was in the middle of eating with my girlfriend and my mother and her husband. And we seen the silence. We came out to see if my car was all right. And we seen the guy got shot in a white caddy, and, like the bullets went into my car there. You were parked right next to him? Yeah. I was sitting in the back seat. And that's where the bullet hit? Yeah, yeah on, on the passenger side, yeah. So if it had been just a few minutes earlier? Yeah, if you had Organized crime sources say the hit is part of the ongoing war between reputed mob leader John Stampa and former Scarfo associate Joey Merlino. That war also resulted in the attack on Stampa and his son late last month and also the shooting of alleged Stampa associate Leon Lanzalato Wednesday night. There's definitely part of the ongoing war. The gentleman who uh, uh, was shot tonight uh, was part of uh, a rival mob faction. Uh, other mobsters came upon him and uh, a gunfight ensued. Uh, he didn't have any weapons as far as we can tell and he was shot. Several family members raced to the scene tonight including Baldino's daughter. She's the one with her arm over her face. Baldino's father also arrived here only to learn that his son had just died. The FBI knew before he was killed that Michael Cinglini in the red jacket was on a hit list. Knew that John Stanfa was plotting the death of a young associate who got cute with his daughter Sarah. Heard Stanfa threaten to pull out the tongue of this enemy, Gaten Lucibello. And listen to what mob figures said after Mario Riccobini got cacked in the parking lot of a South Jersey diner. They heard no sorrow or pity, because Riccobini was an informant who shouldn't have moved back home. They also heard a lot about how Stanfa's food distribution business in Gray's Ferry was the envy of some New York crime figures. Lots of mafia violence still plays out in the streets of Philadelphia, but it's been suspected that the leadership has been across the river in South Jersey for years. And that's what the FBI felt they proved when they started bugging the office of Camden lawyer Salvatore Avina, the lawyer for John Stanfa. Now, Stanfa first made news in 1980 as the silent Sicilian who drove Angelo Bruno home on the night he was killed. He kept his mouth shut when questioned, served time, shaved his beard, grew beefy. By the 1990s, he lived in this house in rural Medford, New Jersey, and the things he discussed in his lawyer's office from October of 91 through September of 93 were all captured on tape by federally authorized wiretaps. Here's some of what the feds overheard. Stanfa and his consigliere, the man on the right named Tony Buck Piccolo, constantly discussed what to do about the local mob's young Turks, Michael Cinglini and Joey Merlino. Stanford complained about their lack of respect. Tony Buck said they had no brains. In two years of listening, the FBI first heard of their plans to make peace with the wise guys that Stanford called the Little Americans, and then a year later, planned to murder them and dump their bodies in quick-drying cement. The wiretap caught Stanford complaining that he had no local able-bodied hitmen he could count on. Eventually, he hired two to carry out the ambush we can all recall, how Michael Cinglini was killed on a busy corner in the middle of an August afternoon, and how skinny Joey Merlino walked away with a bullet in the butt. The wiretaps also explained why this waiter, Fernando Vincente, was abducted in a botched kidnapping from the San Marco restaurant. Someone saw Vincente being shoved into a truck and called police. The chase ended on the expressway with these two Stanford soldiers driving the van. The reason? Well, Vincenti might have been able to reveal the whereabouts of a friend, a pizza maker who'd gotten Stanfa angry when he put the moves on his daughter, Sarah. The two kidnappers were eventually indicted along with Stanfa, but the interesting part? This one, Rosario Bellocchio, was engaged to marry Sarah Stanfa. The lawyer who occupied the bugged office, Salvatore Avina, was overheard discussing his own problems with a partner in the trash business who was ripping him off. He planned to sue the partner, but he was advised it might be better to have his partner accidentally crushed in his own compactor. That never did occur. 
Avina was overheard in more potentially incriminating conversations on the day that Stanfa's car was shot at during morning rush hour on the Schuylkill Expressway. John Stanfa survived the hit, but his son, who is not a known mobster, was shot in the face. Later that day, Avina was taped discussing the hit, how the rule was broken that you never hurt the family. Along with Avina that day was a bookie who was indicted with Stanfa six months later. That bookie, named Shotzi Sparacio, complained that before, mobsters mediated things, ironed something out. Now he said he just didn't know where things would lead. But the FBI knew. It was a sweeping conviction. There were 37 counts against John Stanfa and the seven others. There were 37 guilty verdicts. The defendants reacted with stoic silence. Their mothers, wives, and children, however, openly wept in the courtroom. Defendants Stantha and Frank Martinez will get life in prison. The others face 40 to 80 years behind bars. They could not have looked at all the evidence and come back with a guilty verdict on every count. Our present state of mind is that we're just despondent about the result of the case and the family's... Uh, hysterical about it, and I really can't comment on anything more than that. Uh, I assume we'll appeal. For weeks, the prosecutors had presented secretly recorded tapes of the mob planning multiple crimes. It presented turncoats who swore that Stanfa and company was immersed in a war against a mob faction led by Joey Merlino. One such battle was caught on videotape. <laughs> There was also testimony three killings had been ordered. Defense attorneys finally admitted today that all the evidence was just overwhelming. It was insurmountable for me, uh, you know, between the combination of tapes, witnesses, and the fact that there was a surviving, surviving victim of a hit who actually testified against me. I'm familiar with no RICO prosecution in the past where you actually had a survivor get up on the witness stand and show two bullets in the back of his head. That survivor, mob hitman John Vesey, who proudly wore this tattoo illustrating his line of work as a mob enforcer. He is considered the prosecutor's star witness. We are pleased with the verdict. We can't comment any further than that right now. We will comment further after the forfeiture verdict is rendered. Minutes after the guilty verdicts, the prosecutors moved to strip the Stanfa mob of its property. The government asked the jury to forfeit mob cash and real estate, including Stanfa's family home in New Jersey, his Philadelphia business, Continental Food Distributors, and a Stanfa-owned diner. At that, convicted mob boss Stanfa stood up in court and protested. For more than two months, the families of John Stanfa and his seven co-defendants came to the federal courthouse in support of their loved ones. Today, they wept in court, and at one point, John Stanfa asked his family why they were crying. As the verdicts were read, some of the tears turned to uncontrollable sobs. Sobs for the men who will spend most, if not all, of their lives in jail. I never thought that my husband would never come home. I, I've never thought about that. We've always kept up hope and faith and prayed to the Lord that he would be coming home, and he's not. I just can't think of that. Defendant Frank Martinez, like John Stanfa, will be sentenced to life. Government His wife, Maria, said her husband never killed anyone, unlike the government witnesses who helped convict him and the others. We're Thanks. just all in shock right now, and we just think that the government is very unfair to let cold-blooded killers get off get paid for killing people, get new houses, and that's the message that they're sending out to people. Get okay, we out and kill, but we'll take care of you. The family of John Stanfa, his wife Lena, and two of their children, Sarah and Joseph, had no comment on the verdicts. The wives we spoke with are bitter over the government's prosecution of this case. They say their husbands may have been involved in gambling operations, but they murdered no one. They believe the jury did not consider all the evidence and that the judicial system failed them. I'm Kathy Gandolfo, Channel 6 Action News at the Federal Courthouse. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel and check out more of our content. Feel free to give your feedback and suggestions on what we should do next in the comments. This is Infinite Lee Productions. We love ya.